Hello, guest designer Fleur here. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful station necklace or tin cup necklace. So as you can see, they're all pearl knotted onto there. We've got our gorgeous pearls and our beautiful morganites. So this one is quite a long necklace, so it could be worn in lots of different ways. What I'm going to do at the end of the video, I'm going to photograph different ways that it could actually be worn on my mannequin. So you could either double it up or you could have it um, as one single long line necklace. So to make this, we have everything in the kit that we need. The only things we need to add are two small um, three or four millimeter stone and silver beads and a little bit of French wire. Um, everything else is in your kit, so you get your silk, your gemstones and your pearls and a findings pack. The other thing that we're going to need for equipment wise, we're going to utilise one of these little um, not a bead tin cup spacers. Now they come in two different sizes, so you get both of them in the packet. Um, I'm going to use a smaller one, the half inch one. If you don't have any of these, then you can use just a little bit of cardboard um, to just go around the silk just to, to measure it, or something like your knotty do it all board or your knotting station from Beadsmith or a Beadalon. Um, both do a product where it measures how much of a gap you've got in between. So we're going to use our tweezers for this technique. So with your tweezers, um, anything that's not like an eyebrow tweezer um, is perfect. So and nothing with serrations on the inside. So these are straight knotting tweezers. You can get curved knotting tweezers as well. Need a pair of scissors just to cut off our silk. Um, the the finer the nose, the better. Um, we're going to use a little bit of our um, hyper cement glue. Um, you could e either use this or E6000. Never use a glue that's super though because that will rot through the silk. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started with actually making this beautiful necklace. So what I need is I'm going to take my silk and we're going to just stretch this silk. So I've taken it all off the um, off of the card. Now the only thing we don't stretch is by the needle that's here but the rest of it we're going to go through and stretch so that it's nice and taut in between your fingers. Now what this does is it's doing two things, it's looking for any abnormalities on the actual uh, silk itself but it's also um, stretching it to stop it stretching as much when it's being worn as a necklace okay so that's that nicely stretched okay so the first thing we need is we need a little piece of our french wire so i've got a little piece there we need one of our um seed beads or metal metal bead and a jump ring okay so I'm using a jump ring because then I can attach the clasp to the other side of the ju to a jump ring and obviously we need a jump ring to attach the clasp to when it's worn. We also need a little crimp cover just so that we can cover that first knot up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the actual necklace out of the way so it doesn't get caught on anything. And I've moved my tin cup space to the side. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to pop on my metal bead. Okay, so that's the first thing that goes on. And bring that all the way down to the bottom so that it's near to the edge, but it's not going to fall off of the edge. The next thing we're going to pick up is the French wire. So again, picking up that French wire and I'm holding on to the French wire between my thumb and my first finger and bringing that down to the bottom. If you don't hold on to the French wire, what can happen is it can get caught or snagged on anything. And if you're using sterling silver French wire, we don't want to waste that. So we want to keep that as perfect as we can. So there's our French wire down to the bottom. And then we're going to pop our jump ring on. Okay. So the jump ring then again can go all the way down to the bottom. So that we've now got our little list of components, if you like. So we've got our bead. We've got our French wire, and don't worry that the jump ring's gone the other side of the French wire. That doesn't matter. So we've got our bead, our French wire, and our jump ring. And now what we're going to do, we're going to take the needle and we're going to go back through the metal bead, going towards the tail end of the silk. So we're just going to go all the way around. So I've gone back through that metal bead, bringing that all the way around. 
I'm doing this nice and slowly so that the silk doesn't get caught on anything. So bring that all the way down. And what will happen when it gets closer to the bottom, that little piece of French wire now, when I pull the end, what will happen is it will start to curve around and make a little protective horseshoe, if you like, or a little protective um, area against from the silk to the jump ring. So you can see now that we can't see any of that silk at all. It's encapsulated within the French wire, which means that this part here, which is the most vulnerable part of the necklace, won't wear as quick because that, that little piece of French wire is protecting it. So now I'm going to do an overhand knot and another one just over the top to secure everything in place. Okay, so that's my two knots and then I'm going to take a little bit of my glue and I'm just going to glue the knot itself, so just a little dab of glue A little dab of glue and then up this end here where it's the tail end I'm just going to wipe the excess glue onto there. Now the reason why I'm doing that is that when this dries it will then dry clear and, um, and solid so when I cut through it I won't have a halo of silk around, around the actual piece. I'm just going to pop the lid back on the glue. Now ideally we would let this dry completely before we pop the crimp cover on. But what we're going to do is just for just for the speed of the demo, we're just going to pop on our little crimp cover. But like I say, usually you would wait for all of this to dry before you'd start then going ahead with your design. But you can see now how from the outside that little crimp cover covers that very first knot and everything else in there. So what you would do then is taking your flat nose pliers. Just work from side to side and just start to bring that together. As soon as you can see it's coming together, just using the pliers front and back. Just keep nibbling it round so that that now has now encapsulated that very first knot and we've got a nice neat look. Now I'm not going to cut this little tail end off yet. I'm going to wait right till the very end and then cut that off. Okay, never cut anything really that's got wet glue on it because the what happens with the um, glue is it, it makes this, the material wet and it then swells up the fibres within there so the knot could come undone if we're not careful. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring over our pot of um, beautiful pearls and morganites and we're going to add on a trio of gemstones. So we're going to pop on one of our pearls and if, it, if the pearls are just a little bit um, tight going over the top of that needle they will go over you just have to just give them a little push and they will go over. If you feel like though that it's going to snap or break obviously stop uh, and choose a different pearl. It may be that there's a little bit of um, pearl dust in there so what you can do is take your reamer and just ream through that pearl. So I've got my trio in place. I'm going to bring those all the way down to the bottom again. So there's my first little trio. Now using my tweezers to knot, what I'm going to do is do my overhand knot now. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing the silk all the way around my hand. I'm just going to lift that a little bit so you can see. There we go. So bring the silk all the way around my hand and do an overhand knot, exactly the same as what I would be doing if I was going to use uh, my knotting all. So I've now got my overhand knot and my pearls that are here. Now taking my tweezers, I'm going to go through the loop of the overhand knot and hold on to the top of the pearls or the trio of gemstones as tight as they will go and then taking my hand that I'm not using so in my case my left hand I'm going to tighten that silk so it's knotted the tweezers completely on top of 
those pearls okay and then what I'm going to do is resting it on the pad of my finger and taking out my tweezers so we've still got the knot here right, let me just move that little bit of silk so you can see what I can what I'm doing so the knot is still on the top what I'm going to do now is put my tweezers back in over the top of the pearls and I'm not going to move the tweezers I'm pulling the silk up okay so you can see that how it tightened that down perfectly okay and there's my first knot in place all right what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim down this little tail end so it's not as um it's not in the way as much so now we've got our first little trio so now what we need to do is we need to work out how to use our little um spacer bar so this has actually got a little slit in the top so what we do is we actually pop the silk into the actual spacer bar itself that now gives me that half an inch um gap between the pearls and my next knot so i'm going to do my next knot now so obviously no gemstones have gone on yet because i need to just knot that in place make sure that it they stay with that gap so again i have my my loop for my um my knot put the tweezers through hold on to the top of the sponge of the um spacer bar tighten that down take it off take the tweezers out resting it on the palm of my hand or the pad of my finger whichever is more comfortable pop my tweezers back in at the top of the knee at the top of the knot and pull the silk so we're not going to start to push the the tweezers down the silk because that will shred the silk when I take this out we've there got a perfect little gap so what we can do now is we can take our needle and again we can pop on our next trio so we're going to pop on one of our pearls now you've noticed that I'm doing the pearl and then the morganite and then the pearl. Now the reason why I'm doing it this way around rather than the other way around is the pearl has the smallest drill hole. The morganite has quite a generous drill hole which means that the knot of the silk won't sit on the outside of the morganite. So I have to do it the other way around so that the knot sits on the outside of the um, of the pearl but it doesn't sit on the outside of the morganite if that was the other way around this knot here would disappear inside the actual morganite itself so hence why i'm doing it this way around and again overhand knot taking the tweezers go through the loop of the knot holding onto the top of my trio pulling that nice and tight taking it on the pad of my hand, pushing down my tweezers on top and pulling the silk up to actually tighten that knot. And there we've got our next little trio. And then again, from a trio, we then need our little gap. So again, using my little tin cup spacer, another overhand knot, tweezers through the loop of the knot, holding onto the top of the sponge, tighten the knot resting it on the pad of your finger tweezers back in over the top of that knot pushing it down and pull that silk so we're not going to move the tweezers up and down we're not going to shred that silk we're just moving that knot so you can see there's my knot I'm going to take that out I've got the same gap as what I had last time so I'll just do it one more time for my next trio is going on so my pearl my morganite my pearl bring that all the way down to the bottom overhand knot tweezers through the loop on top of the last pearl of the trio tighten that silk up resting it on the pad of your finger tweezers over the top pull that silk up and there we've got our next little gap 
So we can see there now that we've got three trios and you would just carry on till you get to the end of your necklace. On the very last trio that you're going to do, you don't put a knot on there and then you follow what we did to start with. So you put your metal bead, your French wire, your jump ring back through the metal bead and then at the end we're going to just split that silk in half. So when you cut it off, you know, I just use this little bit here that I've cut just to show you. When you get through that metal seed bead, if you untwine silk, it goes into two twines, if you like. So what you're going to do is bring those all the way down to the bottom and then use these two to make a knot either side of the, of the between the pearl and the, and the, the last spacer bead. And finish that off with a little bit of glue and then a crimp cover over the end and you've got a beautiful necklace of tin cup spaced or station necklace that you can then wear. So I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration.